you hear what the cat drug in? Angela here, Backstage Access, Strike TV, in the beautiful studio of Bounds Autoplex. Hey, we've got a talented little lady here. Casey Lansdale, how are you doing? Hey, I'm good. Thanks for having me. Oh, well, thanks for being here. I understand you got Nathan, your sidekick. I do. Nathan Stoneman on guitar. Awesome. And you're going to play us a little tune, your new single. I am. I have a new single called Sorry Ain't Enough off the Restless album. Can't wait. Well, y'all take it away. Thank you. Right, iTunes, Amazon, um, CD any, Baby. Right, any of the places the that music is sold. <laughs> Sounds good. And real quick, you're part of the hometown here. I am. Out of Nacogdoches. East Texas, that's right. Oh, welcome back. Thank you. It's good to be here. <laughs> yeah, I've heard, you know, you've done Nashville, you've been a little bit of everywhere, so yeah. pretty good to be home, huh? It is. Um, after this, I'm going to go to dinner with my parents, and that's going to be really nice. So. Aww, <laughs> that's great. Well, hey. Angela here, Backstage Access. Y'all don't go anywhere. We're going to come right back with Miss Casey Lansdale. And we're back right here at Backstage Access on Strike TV in our beautiful studio, Bounds Autoplex. What do you think? It's wonderful. Did you see some of those nice trucks out there? I did. I plan on uh, taking some for a drive right after this. Which <laughs> they one? don't know it yet. Yeah, they <laughs> don't know it. I mean, which one do you think? The Chevy, the Ram? 
Um, Maybe well, I have to say, I'm more a Dodge girl. Okay. My grandfather worked Dodge. at a Dodge plant for a long time. So. Oh, you got to stay faithful. Yeah, I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> well, hey, take the Ram truck. That's it, huh? <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> That's too much oh, man. <laughs> well, uh, Casey Lansdale. Yes. Nacogdoches. Right. Um, the new album. Tell us a little bit about the new album. Um, wow. The executive producer. Yeah. Um, well, John Carter Cash. It's How did you land that, girl? <gasps> it's really been one surreal thing after another. Um, mm -hmm. The album, it started, I've been writing on those songs for about four years. And I worked right. on the album. I was working with a company, mm -hmm. writing all these songs. And I had actually just met John Carter around hmm. town. He was fr um, friends. He was an author, actually. He's a talented author. Right. And my father's an author. So somehow wow. we ended up kind of meeting each other, being right. friends, and right. then in that world. And then I host the East Texas Songwriting Workshops out of Nacogdoches, where I bring in a guest and we kind of have an event. Yeah, and it's a really cool thing because, right. you know, I'm from here and I like to do what I can to return and give back in a little way. To help the community. And, uh, yeah, as much as possible. And he d agreed to come as a producer guest. Hmm. So he came and he talked about songwriting and production, and so we kind of forged a bigger friendship, and we kept writing together. Mm -hmm. And um, at this time, the co um, contract I had with the other company kind of ran out. Mm -hmm. So I had all these songs now that I've been writing for years and nowhere to record them. Wow. And so, yeah, and so, you know, it's a little disheartening. And he, uh, I had called him, and wow. I said, yeah, you know, I'm working on this project, and all this is going on. He said, well, why don't you come record it at the cabin? And I said, all right, I'll be there. Mm. And the rest, as they say, is, is history. history. <laughs> wow. That is great. It was that great. Is awesome. I mean, he's produced Laura Lynn. You know, oh, yeah. Just the list goes on and on. Well, and That's Rick Rubin was his, uh, you know, trainer. So mm -hmm. he learned from one of the best producers right, right. alive right now. And then, of course, um, they just had the new Johnny Cash album that came out in February. Correct. He produced that. Um, that went number one, I think. Yeah. Uh, he's doing it. the Loretta album that you know, just came out. Mm -hmm. I mean, among so many other projects, I mean, he's very uh, diverse and yeah. he's really yeah. easy to work with. He's a nice guy. You know, you, you would come in and there'd be a hot tea and a little, you know, chocolate here. Wow. And you come in, you're very like, oh, I'm relaxed. I'm pretty relaxed. enjoy myself. <laughs> and he, he would say, you know, follow your joy. And I think he really um, set hmm. the tone with that phrase mm -hmm. because his whole point was, it's not about trying to be this, this, or this. It's about following who you are as an artist. Mm -hmm. And I think he really let me, um, kind of discover myself during this process. Right. Well, you got a great album. Thank you. I'm great really producer. excited about it. Yeah, the production, the instruments. I mean, everybody yeah. on there is just... And the songwriting. The songwriting. Miss yeah. Casey. <laughs> I wrote seven of 11 of them, and I'm really right. proud of them. Uh, the ones that I didn't write, I just thought were good songs, mm -hmm. and I thought it was important to mm -hmm. not necessarily exclude something just because I wasn't a part of it because I think right. Hard to Be a Lady is one of my favorite songs on there and uh, that was written by Roxy Dean and um, Jeff Beavers hmm. and I think it's just um, sassy and fun and I think that song sort of set the tone for the rest of the songwriting wow. and then that's where the single Sorry and Enough sort of came out mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. um, it is a breakup song and it is you know Sorry and Enough but the whole point when we wrote it was that mm -hmm you teach other people how to treat you, whether it's your romantic relationships, right. your friendships, your coworkers, and that's what it's about. It's about being strong and kind of being true to yourself. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's awesome. Thank you. Hey, now growing up, <clears throat> I always like to ask everybody, growing up, I, well, I understand your family. It's, it's musical. It's always been the life of music. Right. You know, what, what was that like? Well, you know, we are a creative family, and not just music. Um, as I said, my father's mm -hmm. an author, yeah. my mother's an editor, my Uncle John, um, we talked a little bit before. Yes. He recorded at Sun Records many years ago, um, much less successfully than Johnny mm -hmm. Cash, but uh, he knew Johnny, he knew all those guys. My aunt went to school wow. with Elvis, so it's sort of funny to fast forward, you know, some odd years later, and there's <laughs> just a little bit of six degree yeah. separation kind of thing. Here you are singing, and right? Wow, yeah. Loving it. So <laughs> <laughs> he was probably thinking, "Oh gosh, I hope she, you know, gets a real job and uh, doctor, uh, lawyer, and Indian chief or something." <laughs> nah, you love it. Oh, I love it. You wouldn't want to do anything else. No, I, I wouldn't. No. And you know, th there comes that time when, when you make a choice and you kind of decide the path that you're going to go down, mm -hmm. and I'm really glad that this is the path I chose, but I know uh, my parents were, you know, hoping for a solid thing, but then they couldn't really say anything either, because they're creative too, so, 
Um, They're like, just go. Yeah, do it. they they were We're like, oh, please be <laughs> please be a doctor because someone can take care of us in our old oh. age. And I was like, musician. They were like, okay. Oh. <laughs> so, but I'm actually I'm really lucky because um, my family's really supportive, and I think because they are from a creative environment, so right. they're kind of used to that, and they understand what it takes, and they understand that um, you know sometimes it's just about doing the work and putting yourself out there and seeing what happens. Mm -hmm. And you're doing a great job. Thank you. The I'm radio fine. tour, you're enjoying that? <laughs> a lot. You know, this is, we just kicked off today, actually, um, the wow. Texas side. And I'm really just loving being home. I'm loving the weather. I, oh, you know, me too. This time last I year I was in height. Minnesota. <laughs> oh, snow probably? <laughs> Negative yeah. 20 degrees. And oh. it was, it was mm. interesting. It was so cold I didn't even feel temperature. Yeah, exactly. And so that was a different experience. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, music and just the art itself has taken me all over and I really mm -hmm. got lucky because I've been able to experience many different places, meet many different people mm -hmm. and I, I just wouldn't trade it for anything. Yeah. So, That's good. you know, <laughs> well, I know we were talking earlier about, uh, kicks 105 and love game with Danny right. Merle and he kind of plays a special role. He Danny, plays your music first. Danny is one of the very, very first people that actually, um, gave me a chance, not only by playing my record, but by mm -hmm. having me in as a guest, he was involved in uh, writing one of my very first recommendation letters when I was trying to get club gigs. And he's just wow. someone that I've always been able to call and sort of depend on mm -hmm. and say, Danny, I'm going to be in town. Do you think that, you know, I could hop in the studio and kind of talk about this project I'm doing? Or when I was doing the songwriting workshops, you know, can I come right. in and promote it? And he's always open door policy wow. with me. And, you know, you, you barely find that with friends so to That's find true. that with somebody in sort of a mm -hmm. work environment we have been you know turned into friends over that time and uh, I really appreciate the people who take the time to say you know what we're gonna do this because we care about music we care about right. Texas we care about all these things mm -hmm. and we're gonna put that out there I mean just like what you guys are doing right now oh yeah we love it yeah so, yeah I mean I, you, you can gotta tell. love what you do you but know? you can tell because you know yeah. you come in and you're all smiles and and that's what you want to see and that's what this is all about because yeah. if, if you, you know, if you that's pass true. on and you're not having a good time, then what was all that time it, spent You might as well quit, you know. Right. With us, we like to see the artists and get to know them and, you know, you learn their background. It's just, it's real fascinating. You get to see them move up the charts. And yeah, well, if... Uh, their dreams come true. <laughs> so it's, it's all good. If we're lucky, yeah. yeah. And if we're lucky and we work hard. So yes, definitely. What, I, I can't remember who said it, but I become luckier, at, you know, as I work harder. And, mm -hmm. you know, that I think that's always been true is... You'll be fine. You have to you have to do the work, but you have to just you know sort of believe in it and mm -hmm. release mm -hmm. it. That's good. Okay, so that single right there, sorry ain't enough. You got the album Restless, and they can get the the single on iTunes, CD iTunes, Baby. Amazon, CD Baby, Spotify, any of those places. That and then how about your website? Music. Uh, yeah, of course, CaseyLansdale.com. That's K-A-S-E-Y-L-A-N-S-D-A-L-E.com. Um, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Facebook, I'm on mm -hmm. Instagram, so if you reach out, I can make it happen. <laughs> you can make it happen. Now, I know you love music, and you also love animals. I so do. tell me about your cats. <laughs> <laughs> the crazy cat lady. <laughs> but uh, I do, I, you know, I love all animals, and I'm actually also very much a dog person, but mm -hmm. as much as I travel, it's a lot mm -hmm. harder to care for a dog. But I have two cats, and mm -hmm. uh, one is named Yoda. He's a little orange tabby, because when I got him, his ears were giant. <laughs> and uh, the other one is a special case. <laughs> he was found in the lumber pile at Lowe's in Nacogdoches. Oh, wow. And he's very, um, he's only got three little toes on his back feet. And he's got a little Aww. tooth that hangs over. So he looks like a demon. So uh -oh. his name is Grim the Reaper. <laughs> Grim. So we call him Grimmy. <laughs> Just because Grimmy sounds much cuter than, you know, Grim the Reaper, Angel of Death. Right. But, uh, and he's the funniest cat because he's really nice to people. But mm -hmm. to other animals, he's just always bullying. But oh, that's weird. It is. Well, and because he doesn't have the toes, he doesn't have any yeah. depth perception, he doesn't have any balance. So um, last night, for example, he's laying off the couch, and he reaches to swat at the other orange cat as he walks uh -oh. by, and he just rolls off into oh, the floor. No. <laughs> I'm like, that's karma. Yeah. But they're fun. You know, I, I love animals. They are fun. <laughs> I, I think that the way people treat animals is very representative of who they are. Mm -hmm. I think that to be able to treat an animal kind... Um, when you get nothing really in return, says a lot about who you are as a person. Right. right. So, um, they, they've always, you know, even when I don't want animals, they come into my life. People know that I'm an animal person, and they'll call and, hey, can you take care of such and such? And 
my yeah. take care of. I, I <laughs> yeah, sure, I'll watch yep. it for a day or two, find it a home, you know, <laughs> and then like uh, two months later, why is it still here? It's you, my pet. You got attached. You can't so, give it up, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, that's how we are with our dogs. Yeah, it's hard. They how just many, show up. How many do you have? <laughs> We've got three. Oh, that's a lot of dogs. We've got three dogs and a horse, so. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I don't have a horse. When I was little, I tried to convince my parents I could keep a horse in my bedroom. Hmm. And I was really sold on how that could work. Yeah, it didn't work, did it? No, ah. they, they still bring that up. Every time I say something that's a little out there, they're like, oh, yeah, you want a horse in your bedroom, too? And I'm like... <laughs> you probably got what the closest thing is stuffed animal. <laughs> yeah. it's messed up, guys. <laughs> That's cute. Well, Casey, I've had a blast hanging out with you and getting to know you. Love the music. Thank you. Well, and, uh, we wish you all the luck. Hey, thank you so much for having me. And you know, I'm from this area, so next time I come back yes. by, I'm gonna seek you. You guys gotta out. holler at us, <laughs> and we'll go eat at the courthouse whistle stop somewhere. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll take you to eat. I'm ready. I like food. <laughs> thank hey, you. You're our kind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm Angela, this is Casey, and this is Backstage Access, Strike TV. So much more. Boy, you'd be embarrassed if you only knew all the different places that you've got my mind running. Strike TV. Video